Welcome to Abstract Boss. My name is Ashley and today I am going to show you how I created this alcohol ink on resin, and I did say that correctly, on resin art piece. I will do a full walkthrough on this particular piece, but also give you insights, tips, and tricks along the way so you can make your own alcohol on resin art piece at home. Let's get started. <music> Before beginning or even mixing your resin, you want to make sure that you have all of your supplies laid out. I have my resin right here. I'm using the Counterculture DIY Artist Resin. I am using the Silver Pinata Alcohol Ink, the Wild Plum Ranger Alcohol Ink, and the Passion Purple Pinata Alcohol Ink. The white is going to be the Armor Art Epoxy Pigment. And these bad boys are alcohol mixed with powdered pigment. And you'll need something like this if you want to bring in some extra out into our negative spaces. I have the Recollections Glass Glitter. I have the Colorberry Moonstone. And I have a mix that I just made up myself that I'll be posting on Etsy when I get all my shipping supplies in for this particular product. So make sure you keep your eyes open for that or follow me on my Instagram. Uh, but you do also want to have a heat gun. The biggest thing for moving alcohol ink on top of resin is a heat gun. So make sure that is one of your essentials in your studio. And I will have a blowtorch for popping the bubbles. I do have my wood cradle board primed with gesso. I did two layers. The sides are taped off with blue tape and then I gessoed it. So make sure you do the gesso after the tape because the resin will have issues going down through the tape and I wanna keep my edges nice and clean. The gesso kind of helps to give a seal for the wood and the tape together. So that way the resin will just run over top of it. Now, let's go ahead and mix up our resin and begin. Also, make sure you have the lids off of everything before beginning, so that way you don't have to try to take the lids off of everything while your hands are covered in resin. All right, so the base color is going to be the white, but I mixed a little extra resin so I'm going to set that aside and that is going to be to top coat my other coasters that I have in the curing area. So this I'm just going to go ahead and mix up and pour it all out. I don't have to save any color. It's kind of one of the awesome things about working with alcohol ink on top of resin. I don't have to save any color uh, or use multiple different cups. I can just utilize the alcohol right on top of the resin. So I only end up having to dig resin out of a couple cups. <laughs> I got these new cups from Amazon. It came for a pack of 100. I think it was like $18 and these are reusable. The resin does come out of them. So I will be able to flip these upside down when I'm all done and then pop the resin out tomorrow when it's all cured. Here I am just using the popsicle stick to spread the white resin across the entire cradle board to make sure that every little bit of that wood is now covered with resin. All right, I'm gonna start out by just creating um, a little bit of effect going on by doing my sprays. So you see the effects that are already happening from the alcohol on top of the resin. Now I'm going to do my purple and get this one a little bit closer. This is a little bit more of a fine mist. So we really want some purple showing up here. Okay. 
Now, whenever you're using alcohol on top of resin, it is going to force the resin to expand with any of the colors that are already on there. So you wanna make sure that you are doing something like this beforehand. If you do it afterwards, then you have risk of expanding what you already like too much. Okay, now I'm gonna let that alcohol do its thing and I'm gonna plan out visually in my mind how I want things to lay out. Um, to, because of the way that the alcohol moved, originally I was just planning on going in kind of like a little S and do something like that. But because of the way it moved, I think I'm gonna have kind of like a light and a dark side. So I'm gonna go ahead and lace it this way. Now, whenever you use a side and you have some movement, and you end on another side, it's called activating the edge and it creates a lot of movement with the eyes. Okay, now I'm just doing a little bit at first just to create my lines so I know where I'm going. So, I found that these two colors kind of matched what I had in here the closest. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start with these as my line. I'm just gonna do a couple drops along, straight on top of the resin, and I'm going to fill it with the wild plum here. See how it's expanding? Now we wanna take the heat gun I really like the color that came out with the purple and the plum together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and where there's purple, I'm gonna put the plum and vice versa. All right, so notice all of these cells that are starting to happen. Beautiful. So now I'm gonna do that exact same thing on this side. All right, I'm not hugely fond of the way this peach color is looking with the plum. So I actually think I am going to do more purple over here. I think having just a little bit of that hidden plum is exactly what I'm going for. I'm just gonna blow most of it off with the heat gun. When you put texture on after the resin is on there, it will push out. So you don't wanna do it too quick I'm probably gonna let more of this sit and then I'll do more later once it starts to get kind of like a gel-like texture consistency. And you can test that by the drips or touching whatever falls off of your resin piece. I am 
really, really liking this. I think I like the amount of depth that came from the purple over here though. So I'm gonna add a little bit more over here um, mixed in with that wild plum. Okay, now I am going to use my glass glitter. I'm gonna put it in a paper cup so that way I can bend it and control the flow of the glitter. Okay, now I am loving the cells. I'm loving the way it looks. You can add some more of the alcohol right on top to help create some more cells though. So I'm gonna do this from really high up because on the background, it's okay to be a little bit more concentrated because it's a background. And you can tell I decided I didn't like the background, so I was able to mostly blow it off. But with this, it's gonna be a lot harder to blow it off or adjust things. So because this came out in kind of like a star shape, I don't want that on this piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise it super far up and let the alcohol drip on it. There's still not as much dark here as I would like as on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some more purple again. There we go. That I am liking. Okay, not as much cells over here. So I'm gonna take that purple mist again and go right over top. Okay, now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna start fishing out my glitters that fell outside. If you can't fish them out, you can always poke them down too. Okay, now I can come in and sprinkle some of the moon dust. Again, since there's no like shaker on here, I wanna go ahead and pour some in a paper cup. Bend it. And I'm just going to allow this to sprinkle right on top of this to give it a little bit more of a cool iridescent shine. Now I was gonna use that silver to bring in some more metallic, but honestly, I don't wanna mess it up. I'm really liking this and <laughs> if I keep fidgeting, I always mess it up. This I don't like though, so I'm gonna change this one white dot. It's so random. So I think I'm going to leave it as is. I'm loving it. It's day two. I've already dumped off the little bit of the rocks and glitter that did not stick into the resin. And I still have the tape along my edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my heat gun. I'm going to keep moving it along the tape. I'm not going to focus in one area that's gonna create a burning smell with the resin and that's really bad for you. So you wanna make sure that you keep moving and as soon as you have the ability to lift it off the resin, you're gonna go ahead and do that. So this part, I will go ahead and fast forward you through. I don't wanna kill you with the noise or the amount of time that this takes. And that's it everyone. Look at the nice clean edge that comes off from the taping. So like I said, make sure you tape and then gesso before you begin so that way you have that seal and you're gonna get that nice crisp line and the resin will not run through that. And let me know what you thought of this project in the comments below. Don't forget to do your own alcohol ink on resin project and submit it in the Facebook group. All right, let me know if you guys have any questions. Just leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.